I've been editing this video that you're watching right now um, on my new Windows laptop and it's powerful enough to play games. But it has a problem with editing videos, DaVinci Resolve. I'm not sure what the problem is. In all aspects, it's faster and better than the Mac I'm using normally. But for some reason, it's just very slow and editing is crap. So um, I'm gonna edit the rest of this video on my old Mac because this just costs a lot of time and is frustrating. Um, sorry DaVinci, not sure what's happening here, but on Windows, it's, it's just not a very smooth program. It might be my hard drive memory, whatever. Uh, we're gonna finish this up on the Mac. But before I forget, and I actually forgot in the last couple of weeks, we have our second game on Switch available right now. Space Grunts, uh, check it out on the eShop. It uh, plays, again, uh, just like Meganoid, it plays brilliantly on the Switch. It's a turn-based game, but um, developed by me, and I don't really like turn-based games at all. So it's fast, it can be played like an arcade action game. Just that if you decide to halt or pause, just don't move and nothing around you moves. It's, uh, it plays uh, very well, it plays very nice, it, it's turn-based. Check it out on the eStore. So last week I started on this whole procedural creature creation stuff. Um, if you haven't seen it, check last week's video. I've been working on that all week. I've been drawing different heads, different tails, different bodies and mix and matching them. And the result is pretty awesome. So um, what we have now is a bunch of little heads that can be uh, combined with a bunch of different body parts. and. Uh, I've created a couple more and you can see there are big ones, there are small ones, there are big ones with spikes and small ones with spikes. Just a bunch of variation of creatures and also a couple of tails. These little blobbies here and this big orange thingy, uh, those are tails that fit on the back end of these creatures, which adds another dimension. Let me just quickly um, boot up this the game and um, I added a little tiny program function just to show a bunch of variation of these creatures so so this little part of the program isn't really part of the game but it's just for me a quick way to uh, check out all the variations we have now as you can see tails and bodies and heads and the computer just mixes and matches those together to combine them into a host of weird little silly interesting type of creatures Now the cool stuff of this is that by adding just one or two new heads we have a host of new creatures and which makes it a lot easier for me. I still have to draw a lot of heads and a lot of body parts, especially the body is just a lot of animation work and that takes a little bit of time but knowing that when I create one type of body the computer will mix and match that with about a dozen heads, a couple of tails and different tails and create new creatures which is um, a lot more fun knowing that that will be the end result than just having to create all these creatures by hand one by one. But all this visual stuff is just a part of the whole solution to my problem. Filling the world with life forms. Now I want the game to create a planet that looks interesting and is randomly filled with creatures and life forms. But there need to be rules to it. So um, as explained in many videos before, randomness isn't really random, there's a whole set of rules surrounding it. The first thing I had to um, fix is that we want random creatures, but even in nature, certain type of creatures will always um, live in a group. And it's very rare to see a different type of creature just roaming in that same group. So even though we're gonna be placing random creatures in the world, we still want to make sure all the creatures in the same neighborhood are the same type. So when the level generator creates uh, the whole planet, the layout and the structure of it, we get to this little function right here, which um, goes from the top left of the world all the way down to the bottom right of the world for every little tile in that map. And it will then decide if um, the temperature is okay between certain degrees, if the area is clear, if, there's not, uh, if it's not in the water, because our creatures are not in the water, they can only survive on land. We do have fishes, but that's another part of the code. 
um, and make sure that it's an area that's uh, that's perfect to create life forms or to place life forms. If it is, if it matches all these criteria, we uh, create a little spawner, which is a little trigger object that doesn't do much until the player gets near it. So it doesn't really exist until the player gets there. And once the player gets there, it will create life. So how does it create life? Um, as soon as a new life or a new entity gets created, it gets a little uh, seeding number. Just compare it to the DNA. This number will always create the exact same type of creature based on that number. What happens is that that seeding number can um, change with a little bit of code into a next number and a next and a next. But because the starting number is always the same, all the codes and all the numbers that follow will also be the same. So as long as that seeding number is the same value, all the life forms being created with that seeding number will look the same and respond and react the same. The next problem is that we want different type of creatures. So if it's very cold, certain creatures should not be spawning there. And if it's very hot, other creatures shouldn't be spawning there. Or maybe certain creatures require a lot of growth and fruit and, and vegetation, while other creatures prefer less of vegetation and things like that. To make sure that happens, um, I added a couple of values to uh, every body and also a couple of values to every head. So for example, we have an average temperature which is added to the head. So every head uh, checks if the temperature where it's now being spawned and created, if that matches the temperature this head can take. We're just talking about a little head, a little image, but you'll get my point. The body has the same, it also checks for the temperature. And if the computer mixes and matches a certain body and a certain head, and both these have the same type of average temperature or within a certain range, the creature gets created. If one of these don't match, it will just try the next body and the next body until it just tried all bodies. And if none of them match the current temperature, the creature will not be triggered and not spawn at all. But we have a nice enough collection of bodies and heads. So there's a big enough variety of temperatures there's always something spawning somewhere. And it's already very fun to walk in the game and just bump into certain creatures that have been mixed with like a very colorful tail and then a very tiny head on a big body or something like that. And it's, it's very interesting and it kind of works. And of course, temperature is just one example. Um, another example is uh, triggers. What scares the creature? Is it just a big explosion or is it even the tiniest uh, thing being nearby? There's a lot of triggers already happening in the game. So all we have to do is uh, link those bodies or those heads with those triggers and the creature will just, based on these triggers, respond to what happens around it. But we don't need all these extra variables. We can also do a bunch of stuff with just the size of the creature. If it has a very tiny body, its um, running speed or its walking speed will be much higher than when it has a big body. And I simply calculate the speed by multiplying the white and the height and check the total value. If it's a above a certain number it will be slow if it's be below that certain number it will be a fast creature but there's more because we're also gonna uh, link the behavior of the creatures to their heads and their bodies or a combination or the average of these two combined so for example if we have fire most creatures might be scared of it but other creatures might very well be attracted by it and come and inspect what's happening. I've already implemented that the bigger creatures don't really walk around as much as the smaller creatures. So they're very much static at one place, just uh, eating grass and things like that. And every now and then they move, but far less than the smaller creatures. And all these little behaviors and changes and things make it a very vibrant and interesting world to walk around in. Um, that's it for this week's video. Um, hope you enjoyed it. Also, this just, this, this is happening next week, a new little character. Um, been talking about it on Discord and asking for feedback. So uh, make sure to check out the Discord if you want to help and give feedback on things like this. Um, working on some new characters for the game. So uh, that's it for this video. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, comment below, like, subscribe, all that stuff. And I'll see you next week. Bye.